ZoxDF looking at Previs from Hack the Box. Uh, this box retired uh, just a few days ago, uh, and I have a blog post up on my site, and I'll include a link in the description for the full solution. Uh, but one of our uh, Hack the Box employees, Conan, uh, pointed out this really uh, neat SQL injection um, that I thought would be worth doing a video on, quick, just quick walkthrough to show exactly how it works and what you can do. Um, it's an injection in an insert statement, which is something that... Uh, is less common, but it certainly can be exploitable. Um, so we'll just look at how we do that and what ha what's happening and how it works. Um, so jumping up to this point in the box, um, there's this execute act after redirect vulnerability in the PHP website that allows me to get in here and create myself an account. I've already done that. If you're interested in the details of that, again, please go check out the blog post. Um, but from here, um, I've got access to this website. Um, it's a file management website. And if I go here to files, um, I can see there's already one file uploaded here, sitebackup.zip. We'll certainly look at that in a second. Um, I can also come here and let's see, uh, if we echo, you know, please leave a comment on this video. And we put that into a dummy.txt. And then we come over here and we upload dummy.txt, submit. And we can see, you know, here's my um, they have a minimum of five characters for your usernames. I had to be OXDFF and uh, dummy.txt is here. Let's see, I can download it and it opens up and it says, please leave a comment on this video. And uh, so we can upload files here. Um, we also have this site backup.zip. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, move, download site backup.zip. Okay, and uh, if we make directory sort, uh, Site backup, move site backup in, oops, shoot. Uh, backup.zip, I, I renamed the zip into just site, so let's move that back. Now we'll move star.zip into site backup, we'll cd into site backup, and I like to, whenever I get a zip like this, I, I want to create another directory to work out of because I don't know if there's a directory in here or if it's just a bunch of files and I don't want it to pollute the main directory I'm working out of. Um, so we'll just, now we'll unzip this and this is just a bunch of files. So um, that works out well. Okay, so we've got all the files here and we can see this is files.php. So if I open that up, the SQL injection is right down here. Uh, let's take a look at in burp repeater real quick or in burp proxy, it should be history. Here's the post to, flat to files. I'm going to go ahead and send this over to Repeater because we're going to play with it in a minute and it's just easier to see here. Um, so it's a post of files. Um, it's a multi-part form data using the boundary, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's basically one block of data here, and there it is between the two boundaries. Um, it is, it's got the name user data. The file name coming along with it is dummy.txt. That was the name of the file we uploaded. Uh, and then here's, you know, please leave a comment on this video. Um, there's the, the text. And so... If we go back over here to the PHP, when PHP receives files like this, it's going to save it off into a temporary location, um, which you can get here um, with using files, user data, um, user data being the name. So that's going to be the, this name is what's going to tie all this together. Um, and then getting the temp name, it's going to get the real name, files, user data. And then again, um, oh, it'll get the real name as well from the file, from the file name here. Uh, it's going to get the contents here. It's going to get the file size off of that. And then it's going to use all those variables to insert that into the database. Uh, well, it's going to actually create a, create a text string, and then it's going to connect to the database and use that, passing the string in as the query. Um, and then based on success or failure, it reports. And then uh, here's the rest, of the, the rest of the page here showing the various files that are already uploaded. Um, so the injection is in this statement when we're building this text statement right here. So I'm actually going to copy this and run over here into Vim and paste it in. It's perfectly across the top of my screen. Excuse me. Um, so you can see right away that um, if I can mess with things like file name, um, I might be able to do an injection here. And so let's actually paste this in, um, come down here and start thinking about, okay, so what happens if we put in a file name, because that's what we control right there, um, that is something like name. And then from there, we uh, start 
you know, now we're going to mess with it. So we, we got to include a file size. So let's just zero and empty file data. And then we can mess with the username. So let's just show, for example, that we can make this uh, admin. I don't even know if that's a user on the site, but let's just pretend it is. And so if we do that, close that off, and then put a semicolon and like that to make the rest to make the rest of it a comment. So all this goes away. And so the, the, the field, the, the injection becomes putting up an empty file, length zero, with a name name and um, thing admin. Let's just call like, like we'll call this uh, empty admin file. So, so let's try that. So then by, by this logic, our file name will be this right here, the stuff between the two quotes that it's intending. We'll come back here and we'll put replace dummy.txt with that. Let's move this over so we can see the response down a little bit and we'll send that and this is actually going to fail i think let's see if we let's find it yeah error while uploading and part of it is i don't know if this if we can actually upload i don't know how this works when we're doing legit things but i think sql does not like having new lines in the after the comment well or said differently if there's a new line after the comment then it's going to uh no longer be a comment it's just going to break so we need to make sure this is one line or less so we can actually i mean we can make it nothing um, and just do that. Uh, but as long as it's one line or less, we should be good to go. Um, did I, where's the, where's the, uh, comment here? I'm going too far. Let's see. After that. Huh, there should be a thing in there. Let's see. Maybe I need to include one something here. Test. Let's try that. And see if see if it makes. It might need to be something in the file for it to process correctly. So file successfully uploaded. That worked well. Let's come over here. If we now now, well, all we've done so far is change what gets written to the database. But lucky for us, when we refresh this page, or actually, let's just click on this page and load it. Empty admin file. It reads from the database and it prints back to us what, what we read. So here's ad, here's something from the user admin, which again we don't even know if that user exists, but we've just created it in the database. Uh, it's a file of size zero, um, and it's here. So that's cool. Now that we can mess with that, what can we do that's a little bit more mischievous, right? Um, so we don't want that string to be there. Let's let's try to do a simple select statement. So we can start with like a select one. Um, and I guess I don't need to save this in my vim file. I can just come over here and let's update it here. So we want to, when you do a select inside of insert, you want to put it inside uh, parentheses like that. And we'll just start with, actually, let's just see if we can do um, not admin like that. Uh, and I need another, do I have one, two, no, I think that's fine. Uh, let's try that, see if it works. File successfully uploaded, back over here. Here's another empty admin file with not admin. And we can now do select statements. And so, if we, you know, to me, the obvious thing is let's let's try to dump the users, right? Um, so we have the source code for this thing. Uh, let's get out of this file and vim login.php. And we can see that it is getting our username and our password. Um, and then it's connecting to the DB. And then it's doing a select star from accounts where username equals. Uh, and then later here, so that's SQL. Uh, so then result users equals and then there's a password field as well um so those are the fields i'm interested in username and password so let's see if we can do that so we can select no longer doing a static string now we will select username from counts now in this page we're only going to return this is this is expecting <laughs> this is expecting a string right here and so if my select statement returns a bunch of accounts, uh, it's probably going to break. Let's, we can try it, I guess. Um, let's send that and see. I'm expecting that to break. Error will uploading, yeah. So the problem here is I'm returning like, I have no idea how many rows, but at least more than one, because I, unless I'm the only user on this box, which seems unlikely. Um, so that's not going to work. But we can just do a limit. We can do a limit one and see if that works. file successfully uploaded. And so here we have a user now is malware. Um, and so this is where you can do things. What I really like to do here is a group concat. What that'll do is take an entire 
column of a database, um, so in this case, usernames, and produce one thing from them. So now I can remove the limit one. And now if I send it, go ahead and just assume it worked for a second. You can see here's malware and there's me OXDFF. Um, we can even do go further than that and we can do concat username comma, uh, actually let's do colon and then password. And let's get rid of the group concat for now. That should work. Select two, one, two, three. That looks good. Let's try it. We always have an error, but see, oh, must have had an error. Let's see. Yeah, error will upload. Okay, so let's see. Uh, select has one open, two open. That closes the concat. That closes the accounts. Um, huh. I thought that would work. Let's see. Uh, let's go back to our working group. So I select. Oh, because because now we're getting multiple rows again. So now we can come back and do limit one. That's why, because we have two, we received two rows. So that's successfully uploaded. So now we should be back to getting. Here we go. We now have malware colon that we put there, and then the password, which is the hash. Um, and one of the clever things about this box is that they're using uh, the salt emoji in the salt, but you know you can see it there. Um, I'll crack that in Hashcat in the, in the intended solution, um, or in this solution as well. Um, and so now the the ultimate you know, can we combine these things would be can we do we put back uh, group and cat around all of this, and then if we do space uh, s e p a r a t o r, and we'll put in like a nice line break there, and then we need to close that out. And now we do from accounts, and we don't need the limit anymore because we're doing the group concat. And we run. Not successfully uploaded. And we upload, and here we go. One per line, all the users uh, and their hashes, which could be then copied off and cracked with Hashcat. So um, anyway, I, I thought this was really neat. Um, playing with SQL injections in insert statements is tricky um, because you got to kind of think of it in two steps. Like, how do I write something to the database? And then how do I get the database to show me that back out? Um, and this is a really good case for it because I have this page that is showing me um, that is, you know, clearly doing, I could look at, I could go look at the source, but it's very clear to me that this, there's PHP here doing a loop and it is running, you know, getting each row out of the database and creating a little table row for each entry. Um, and so because I have this field that's being spit back to me, um, it's no problem for me to write interesting things to the database and then have them written back out. Um, so uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting, and I will talk to you next time.